Hello everyone and welcome to The Grove. My name is Simon Rev and today is another episode of Mob Mixer. In this series, I take two mobs from Minecraft and I mix them together into one humanoid character design. In this episode, we are starting with Jonas, who is a snow golem hybrid. He has snow summoning powers where if he wants, when he walks along the ground, he can have snow just pile up around him and he can also summon snowballs. This is a reference to how in snow in Minecraft, snow golems have the same power, except instead of it just being a passive power other than snowball summoning, he can control it at will. I wouldn't be surprised if this is one of the reasons he wears boots, so that his powers don't occur naturally, but I wouldn't be surprised if snow just collects up around him when he's scared, just on in instinct. And because of his snow golem heritage, I guess. He does prefer colder climates, but it's also because then he has an excuse to wear sweaters and other knitted things that he likes to make because then he feels very cozy. So it is both a preference because of who he is, but also because then he can wear his creations in clothes that he enjoys wearing. For this hood, I decided to design it off of a jack-o'-lantern because you can remove the jack-o'-lantern off of snow golems so then that's why it has the zipper so he can just open it up or put it back if he wants but you do use a jack-o'-lantern or at least a carved pumpkin to create snow golems in Minecraft so it's sort of like a reference to that. I also wanted to include this detail of sort of this braided edge to his sweater jacket because it would add more roundness to his design because he's supposed to be a likable character. And in shape language, from what I could remember, round means more friendly. And so I wanted to add that to his design because he is supposed to be a more friendly and innocent character. He's supposed to be someone who is outgoing and caring, or even if he isn't out. I wouldn't imagine him to be a... not enthusiastic, because I think he would be enthusiastic about knitting and weaving. That's sort of his hobby. But I... I think the word that I'm looking for is energetic. He wouldn't be an energetic character but he would be an outgoing character. And his character, I actually finished the design up first, and a lot of it was because with a talk of my brother, with one of my brothers, about this mixture of a, hum a humanoid character design for a snow golem and a sheep. I think we might have just been talking about specifically sheep. I decided to take that concept that there was this brainstorming thing and put it into this, so. Thank you, younger bro. You helped me with this, whether you realized it or not. So, I also decided to have him holding this yarn ball as if he was showing it off. Like, this is one of the yarns that I create with. And I decided to have Jonas wearing this bag because that's where he would store all of his supplies. He might have hoodies in there, he might have scarves, might have just general sewing, weaving, or knitting supplies in there, depending on what exactly he's doing, like either what he, what activity he wants to do, or what, or if he's just going out for the day. I decided to add the vest because I thought it would be fun. It would also help distinguish his arms from his main body. At first with coloring, I accident I had it where it was white, but I ended up remembering that, oh right, this is supposed to be like sticks, so I ended up chasing, changing the color as you will see later. For his name, it means dove. I was looking at winter names, and I did think about just naming him Jack after Jack Frost, but I decided against it because I didn't want I didn't want something so direct, and that was the similar thing with a lot of the ones, not a lot of the ones, but a decent amount where you're just like, 
it, it's literally just winter. I didn't want something that specific. So then I found Jonas somehow on one of the lists. I don't remember which one. I don't even remember if it was specifically winter. It must have been because I didn't really look at any other ones. And I found Jonas and it means dove. He's supposed to be an innocent character and one that goes after peace. So a dove being innocent in peace made a lot of sense with his character. So I'm like, okay, he's Jonas. It just made sense. And then his last name, Froster, Froster is supposed to allude to another name called uh, Foster, which I remember being a last name. And I, But it would still have this sort of idea of Frost in it. So it'd still be wintry. I still wanted some winter element. And then this, the skirt, I did debate doing sort of like pants or snow pants, but then I remembered that I wanted to continue the shape of a snow golem. And so I did think about him wearing a long skirt, but then he wouldn't move around as easily. So I decided a short skirt. So I just ended up wearing a skirt. It's a little wide and I had trouble with the feet. I end up having a lot of trouble with the feet right here, but I do change it. Eventually get it to something where I like, I ended up having to move the feet so I can actually get them placed correctly and adjusting the skirt. I realized this with Adeline, with Jonas, and in this next person with Daisy, that I need to get better on my feet placements because sometimes they are not good. If they are with pants or like shirt or shorts where you have the definitive, oh, this is clearly where the legs are, then it's fine. If it's without the legs, then I have trouble. So that's one of the areas that I need to improve in my art. So this was a good opportunity to see where I needed to improve because trying to redraw them on the computer is not easy. I don't have a drawing tablet, so I just use pads. I'm fine without the drawing tablet, and I like drawing traditionally because I have more control either way, but I ended up finding some way to make it look okay. And I ended up going closer to what the sketch actually had for the skirt, so I'm not mad at it at all. So I think this is when I'm, oh yeah. For this expression, all, like most of the references of the jack-o'-lanterns that I was looking up for Minecraft sort of looked like the jack-o'-lantern was scowling. So, and I didn't like that. So I just decided, oh, I'm going to make it look like it's a happy face because that would make sense for Jonas. So that's what I did. And then now I'm taking the coloring palettes from the snow gall in my Minecraft and the white sheep in Minecraft. The white sheep would have more grayer tones, but I think it would be just an extension of the white tones from the snow golem so that it would be easier for the clothing. So I'm trying to find, it took me a while, like a little bit of time to get the right combination. So I ended up looking at, okay, so I have the sort of the icy gray coloring for the from the snow golem and then I have the general gray from the sheep and I had to like mix those eventually I just decided okay I was gonna have the sort of icy blue vest and then I was gonna have the white skirt and I don't have it right now but eventually I do switch it back to the stick arms I decided the skin tone was gonna be from the sheep because it the sheep sort of looks like it's wearing a hood. So it seems to make sense in my mind. I did take the brown front brown eyes from the jack-o'-lantern though. Not the jack-o'-lantern, the snow golem. I also decided to make him wand, like the stem of the of the pumpkin. In hindsight, that wasn't really needed. But I decided on it anyway. So, I, here I'm adding, I'm trying to find a good color for the jack-o'-lantern top, 
I decided to just take a jack-o'-lantern itself. Except I was finding ones that seemed a bit too dark because it was in shadow. And so I was looking for a good reference for a little bit. And ended up finding this... Like this flat tea. I think it was supposed to be for if you wanted to make a cube in real life using paper. You could print it out and then you just cut along the lines. And then you could make the cube out of it. But... So it was a good reference. And then here I am switching it to where it's the, sort of the darker version of the sticks. So it looked like he had sticks arms. Because I didn't want him wearing a dress, I just wanted him wearing a skirt. And so here I had the idea of, oh, I could actually use pink. So he's like showing off the coloring of his, of his knitting. So, and one tip that I liked or at least one thing that I like to use is the exclusion tool for selecting. Because then I can select a certain area and just fill in the whole selection. So that's a fun tool. And then I try to make sure that both of them are matching. And then I look at... I think I'm trying to find a good, good reference for snow. So then I can use it on the back layer so I can have it on the background. Because I still want the background color to have some reference to the character itself. And since this is darker, it helps with the brighter foreground of this character. So this is Jonas, and he is a snow golem sheep hybrid. So once I get that fully in, then we will move on to the next person. Our next person is Jong Daisy. I apologize if I pronounced that last name wrong. I was trying to find a good Chinese surname because I wanted to infuse some Chinese elements because she is supposed to be a panda Moo Bloom hybrid. Except Moo Blooms aren't actually in Java Minecraft, which is what I'm using to reference for, for these mobs. And so I was looking and I was trying to find it I was trying to find a substitute and I decided I'm just going to do Moo Bloom because that's not just straight cow, but it's more fanciful. So that's why she also has this mushroom cap on her head because I saw that was a lot of designs. And I decided to use this strap to connect it to her head. Like with Jonas and wanting more round language, I decided to add round glasses, sort of her like her eyes with some of the cartoon styles that I enjoy looking at. So I added her large round glasses into her design. Then for personality, again, like Jonas, she's supposed to be more of a innocent character. For her, she is the main gardener and far farmer at the village that I'm sort of creating with these overworld characters. And just like Jonas, she sort of, I don't want to say reactionary, but she is more of a side character who has her own story going on. But at least going into it, she's more of a crossfire character. And what I mean by that is that how the main characters treat her sort of impacts how they are characterized and how she reacts to the things going on around her is part of her character. So sort of being caught in the crossfire of the events of the plot. But taking in, she would have chances to grow where she gets more active. Instead of being reactive, she would be proactive. And that's sort of what she would be. So she would mainly be this humble farmer, being a gardener, but then maybe her farm gets burnt down or something happens where she has to not just be that side of the of her characterization but she also has to go above the above and beyond with who she is moving on to the rest of her outfit i was looking at chinese styles and i couldn't find anything exactly what made me think oh this could work it's like perfect what i need so i try to choose different elements I tried to choose this shirt uh, style for the chest shape 
It comes from a certain style of clothing, which I'm not going to try to pronounce off the top of my head. I know how it's spelled, I just don't know how to pronounce it, so I'll just put it up on screen. And so I try to reference that with sort of the shirt, but make it more modernized slash casual than it usually is. And then I found a skirt that I found was cute, so I tried to use that as a reference for her skirt. Because I wanted something that was more casual and not fully traditional, because she's supposed to be... She would be a teenager, but she would also be working class. So I needed some sort of mix. And so I tried to find something that worked. Don't know how well I did, but I tried. I also decided that she was going to wear this sort of pin because it's sort of a flower of her family since it's in, since the family farm is specifically what she worked on. And her name, Daisy, it comes from her being a moo bloom. And the name Zhang, it has a connection to archery. It comes from her father's side, because I wanted her father to be a pan panda, since the, I was already searching for a Chinese surname anyway, and from my research, they tend to take the father's name, the children do, so it makes sense that the father was the panda. So I was trying to find good meanings, and I found that name, which means sort of bow and arrow, and it reminded me, arrows in Minecraft just stay on the bamboo and they just never leave. I thought it would be like, oh, it's sort of an honor to the glitch. But I also have it from a poetic standpoint where archery stuck to the family like arrows stick to the bamboo. So archery is just an important part of her father's family side. I thought it was a good thing to include. And I wouldn't be surprised if part of her becoming more of an active character is her learning archery. I think that would be a cool concept to explore. So that might be an interesting picture to create at some point. For right now, I'm doing the coloring. So I end up choosing colors from the Oxide Daisy. And I had to choose a couple different, a couple different pictures for the Oxide Daisy so I could get the bright coloring. And then... I fill in the different colors for the petals and trying to find out why, like where the petals are in comparison to the centers of the flowers. Then I ended up using the undersides of the fungi and the horns of, maybe it is just ears, of the cow for the ears. I was also trying to figure out where I can put everything. So for example, the spots of the hat I needed to figure it out because I hadn't put that in the original sketch and so I needed to figure out how where that was going to go. I do end up changing the light shirt so that it could work. So I ended up darkening the shirt. Here I am trying to choose a skin tone. I am glad that I can choose darker skin tones. I just it made her look like she was wearing a full suit because I also decided to have her have black pants, not black pants, uh, black boots, due to her, due to hooves and black paws of the panda. And so I decided to go back in and just switch it to wear gloves. I might have it where she has a friend who looks more like her original skin tone though. I wouldn't be against it. Maybe after the series is over. I have a lot. I have a lot of people for this series. I have this whole uh, spreadsheet of which character combinations, mob combinations, char creature combinations, whichever term you prefer, so it can work well. So I have a lot in store, but I'm really excited for what it's going to be. And that'll be it for this episode. If you want to make sure that you are notified when the new episodes come up, the new parts to the series, then hit subscribe and the notification bell to be notified and never miss an upload. I also upload songs where I sing and produce music. So if you're interested in that as well, you could also subscribe for that. 
If you like gaming content though, I do have a gaming channel, so feel free to use the link in the description and check out that channel as well. That'll be it for today, so hope to see you next time. Bye!